you walk me through like what it would be like, like a day in the life of a police officer in the area that you were working and, and like a day, not in just any police officer's life, but your life, like how, how, what was like the percentage of crime, organized crime you were participating in and like the percentage of actual police work you were doing? Okay, so I guess there's two different ways to describe it. So there were times when I was just, when I, as an ordinary patrolman, which is what I was most of my career, um, I, I would have two different, I had two different approaches. In the beginning, I was like a glutton. You know, I would, uh, every job that came over as a drug run, I would go on it. And, and there was a 50 of them a day. You know, so you'd call to 50 different drug calls a day. So not everyone did you rob at because, you know, these guys got slipped too. They <laughs> tried to get robbed. You know, and then sometimes you would take it. And, or, or, cause, so here's the deal. The police department didn't want you making drug arrests. Okay? So start with that. So now you're a police officer in a crack-infested neighborhood and you're getting called to 30, 40, 50 drug runs a day. If you're not on one, you're backing up on one. You know, so whatever. So the point is, and we backed each other up out there pretty well because... Any minute, guns start flying and bullets start flying out there. And, 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 and they, it was a violent neighborhood. It was violence every day. I mean, they probably took, we probably averaged five guns a day taken off the street in one precinct alone, maybe more. All right? So, and we averaged a, about a homicide every day and a half. So, it, and usually it takes 10 shootings to get one homicide. In the, you know, maybe eight to, to, to 10. Eight to 10 shootings is one homicide. Mm -hmm. So... You're talking about 2,500 shootings in my precinct and 100 murders, you know? So in that ballpark, you know, my, my numbers are up right now, but in that range. How many, how many people were you arresting? None. You were never, you never arrested anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I made 43 arrests in 10 years. That's it? Yeah. I made, 20, I I, made, I, I, I made I 36 of them in one year. 36 of them in one 36 year? 36 felony arrests in one year. And then after that, I was done. And after that, for done. the rest of your, for the, re the remaining nine years, it was like 10 more. Yeah, maybe less. I don't know. Yeah. That's wild. I was done. I was, I was burnt. I was done. I was, you get in trouble making arrests. So I found out another way to make money. Yeah, making arrests was a big moneymaker. You know, every, every time you make an arrest, usually, usually you get overtime, right? So a cop goes from making, at that time, I guess I was making, if I say $23 an hour, I went up to making $36 an hour. So, and, and it, most of the rest work is paperwork and, and drudge work, but it's, you know, paperwork, it's court appearance, it's, it's uh, sitting in the DA's office, it's transporting a prisoner. So, you know, and now, now you, your buddies by the end of this, your buddies, you, you hate each other by the end of this, because you, you're with this guy the next 16 hours, okay? You and your prisoner. Really? You're hanging out for the next 16 hours, yeah, together. So if you make an arrest, you're basically just you, fucking you, around. Now you with your pal. <laughs> wow. You went from fucking running somebody down, knocking him over the head, to giving him a hug and buying him a beer or that something. That seems like know? a pain in the ass. Seems like a waste of time. Why? I mean, why, do the cop, why does the cop Well, that's how it was. I'm telling you how it was. And yeah. it's, it's not necessarily that way, but I'm hearing, uh -huh. I'm hearing today that it's sort of back to that again. Really? Because the volume of arrests and the backlogs in the system and, you know... And the, and the no bail because the guys they don't they're not, they don't post bail they're back out and they get arrested some guys got arrested seven times in, in three day, in three days you know I mean they're back out in two, in four hours mm. so I mean so I, from what I understand it's really out of control right now but I'm talking about from my experience that's what it was so an arrest equals money so if you don't make an arrest you know I found other ways to make money. What was it like? So the first time you started working for, the, there was the one guy who worked in the. But, grocery but, store. What we're overlooking is the fact that the police department didn't want you making drug arrests. And you became the armed security for the drug dealers. Make sense? What do you mean? Why didn't they want you making drug arrests? Because it cost money. Interesting. They were only worried about money. It's a city. It's, it's, it's a municipal organization. They're worried about money. Huh. So every time I made a drug arrest for a crack dealer or a marijuana dealer at the time or a heroin dealer at the time, I took myself off the street. I made 17 hours overtime. I put one guy in front of a judge. The guy went in front of the judge. He got bailed out, you know, for, you know, a day later. And the cycle repeats itself. So at, at, the end of, at the end of the week, I could, make, I could have made five drug arrests, at every, you know, one a day. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> once, you, once you make one, you're off the street. You get it? Right. So, so they you only make, make the arrest at the end of shift because then you get overtime the whole, right. the whole run. Okay. So what did they want you doing if they didn't want you making drug arrests? Just be visible. Just to be visible. Be visible so that the homicides would stay down. Okay. And summonses. Okay. And make sure you write your book. Summonses. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I used to write them to Benjamin Ward. He was the commissioner at the time. 
And when did all this change? When did this, I mean, at some point there was a, a, a huge push to get everyone that was dealing crack or Coke off the streets, right? Yeah. So, um, so there was an era, there was a time when they executed a cop, Eddie Burns, uh, a drug organization in Queens, uh, executed a cop, uh, by, um, he was guarding, a, um, a witness's house. And I could be wrong on the year. It was either 86 or 88. I don't remember quite. But so on the back of that, the PD and the feds teamed up and they put a joint task force together and went seriously after the crack organizations in Queens specifically. It was, it was odd, though, because they actually went after the crack organization in Queens, but not those in Brooklyn or Manhattan or the Bronx, you know, because cause they, they executed this young cop uh, who was sitting there guarding the uh, witness. Um, so that was where the push came from. And what happened was the Fed stepped in. And there's new laws that they're all complaining about that Joe Biden put in place back in the 80s and 90s. Those laws kicked in, and the Feds began to enjoin arrests by city PD. So the city PD and the federal, the federal uh, offices worked together so that they would take them from city prisons to federal prisons. So that began to... I mean, when I hit the federal prison system in 92, there was 46,000 inmates. When I left in 2004, there was 190 or 185,000 inmates. So the population like quadrupled while I was in the system. And most of those people that came in were young, black, ghetto crack dealers. Really? Yeah. Probably 100,000. All arrested for crack. For crack. Yeah. Just for possession? Was there any like violence? No, 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 no. Listen, listen. No one in there is of... there for, no one's in there for the first sale of crack, okay? Right. No one's in there for that. In fact, they're not in there for the tenth sale of crack. What they're in there for is crack and violence. Mm. So they always say, oh, we're going to let them all out. <laughs> oh, good luck. You know, I mean, you know, and I'm not saying everyone. Don't, I'm just giving you a blanket example, you know. And then there's guys in there that, that <clears throat> sold one kilo of crack to one undercover and they got life. Hmm. You know, 22 years old, they got life, you know. Right. Well, set up, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, never sold a kilo in his life, you know, but I, I, they gave him a kilo to sell to you. I mean, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> this is this both fence on both sides here. I mean, that's how they work. Yeah, entrapment, right? Yeah. It's just, but it's, it doesn't work in a drug case. But that's so fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy that you, at such a young age, were able to, I mean, develop that that street mentality to be able to coexist with these guys and, and work with them and make money with them and like even how uh, the one guy that, that runs the cigar that rolls the cigars who was talking about you he was like yeah I could talk to this guy and he was just like me like I is that a compliment I, I could recognize <laughs> I don't him. know if that's a compliment well yeah well like, he, he's a street guy you know what yeah, I mean right. like he's a New York guy I can talk with him I can I can you know hustle bustle with him and he's not like a normal cop well it is I, I think if, if you show vulnerability and and I mean by that I mean you take risk, like, like if you take risk, people accept you more, right? So for me to have the balls to come up to somebody and say, you know, like, I, I'll give you a funny example. I was uh, working in the 7.5 with my partner at the time. His name was Jerry. We pulled his car over, 280ZX, maroon. Back then, that was the hottest cars, you know. It was maroon or burgundy colored, uh, 280, 280ZX. I pulled him over, and I, and I go to toss the car. Because I know he's a drug dealer, because that's, that's their car. And uh, I tossed the car, I can't find it. And he's looking at me, he's like sweating his fucking balls off. I says, all right, you're good this time, you know. And I let him go. And now I get transferred to Coney Island. Remember I told you I got transferred to Coney Island? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm walking to beat in Coney Island, and this Hispanic guy, a little short, stocky guy, he says, hey, Batman and Robin. And I don't know who the fuck Batman and Robin are. <laughs> it's me and my partner. That's our nickname to them, right? So I go... Who's Batman and Robin? He goes, well, he's Batman because he's taller than me, and you're Robin. I go, uh, okay, what's up? He goes, you guys are in the wrong precinct. So, oh, oh, so, oh you're really smart, you know, because cops take their numbers from their old precinct and put it on their gun belt. So if you see it back in the day, you take your, you put your new numbers on your shoulder, so 6 precinct, because that's Coney Island, mm -hmm. and I put my 7-5 numbers on my gun belt. I said, you saw my fucking gun belt numbers. He goes, no, you pulled me over in the 280ZX. I said, Burgundy? He goes, yeah. I said, the back trunk? He goes, yeah, because you, you, it was a hatchback? Yeah. He said, you missed it. There was 10 kilos in there. <gasps> I said, you motherfucker. <laughs> he says, all you had to do was pull that fucking, the, the, uh, the mold. There's, a, there's a, a, like a plastic mold or a, that gives like a cardboard mold off the, the wheel well. 
He said it was in the wheel well. I said, you motherfucker. Jesus. Goes, but when you come back to the 7-5, I got something for you. Oh, yeah? What do you mean by that? Like, like, I want to work with you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. He says, I said, I said, I said, why? He said, because you never try to lock nobody up. You just want some money. <laughs> so I said, you fucking motherfucker, you got me right. <laughs> he said, we used to call the police. We used to call 911 to see who shows up. And when you and your partner were working, we knew we were good for the night. <laughs> this is how fucking criminals work, That's right? That's amazing. They man. would check on themselves and see who's going to roll up. So anyway, so yeah, wow. that was that's so that's what it's like. You know?